The theme of our lecture is linguistic and ethnocultural peculiarities of phraseological units. Today we are going to discuss the following questions. The first, the correlation between language and cultural identity in phraseological units. The second, national cultural specifics of phraseological units. The end of the 20s and the beginning of the 21st century are characterized by the establishing of anthroposceptic paradigm or in linguistic. Linguistic picture of the world and its constituent concept became the main object of the scientific researchers. Among multiple problems of modern linguistic studies, studying national cultural specifics of linguistics plays an important role. The language is the major way of formation and existence of men's knowledge about the world. National linguistic picture of the world represents language as agent of conceptualization of a national picture of the world and culture of the people as well. Consequently, when studying national picture of the world, the scientists concentrate attention on language units, especially phraseological units, which are carriers of national culture. Phraseological units are often reflect the peculiarities of the culture of the language they belong to. Moreover, they reflect history of that nation, their attitude toward world stereotypes they believe in. Furthermore, phraseological units usually are formed from national sayings and cultural traditions. Phraseological units are common to all languages of the world, but have their unique form of expression. A large number of phraseological units keep a certain national color. This national originality is reflected at the same time both on stylistic and expressional aspect of phraseological unit. Phraseology, according to most linguists, is the most specific and nationally marked branch of linguistic. Specificity of phraseological units is often caused by extra-linguistic factors which are preserved in their figurativeness. Phraseological fund is uh, not just language but also a cultural and historical heritage of each nation. Though the researchers of phraseological units, linguists are able to get important information about nation, the native speaker. It is not enough to know only phraseological unit. It is a need to know what stands behind it. It is, should be considered in connection with the culture of the country and its history. The anthroposceptic study demonstrates that language is a reflection of the surrounding world and a manner of representing and reproducing culture. Phraseology is the only domain of the linguistic study which illustrates the cor correlation between language and culture. Recently, the new direction in the phraseological research involved a linguistic as well as a cultural analysis by interpreting idioms as relevant cultural data. The world view of all the members of the linguistic and cultural community imposes the generation and the understanding of metaphorical meanings through the subconscious process of perception. The cultural identity is expressed through the capacity of the individuals of a linguistic community 
to orient themselves in a large spectrum of social, moral, political values of their mental and empirical experience. Language is penetrated by culture through cultural sentence, cultural concepts, cultural connotations, and stereotypes. The cultural sentence indicate words and combinations of words specific to a linguistic community. The con cultural concepts are abstractions forming the world view in a culturally particular manner. The cultural concepts may coincide in all languages, but in some aspects of their meanings, words and phraseological units, which are similar in various languages, show a relevant degree of specificity. The process through which the culture inform information is inserted into language is illustrated in phraseological units. We can exemplify the cultural specificity of language units by analyzing a number of English and Russian idioms. Some of the idioms are common to the two languages that they were generated by the same factors of logical and psychological nature, or they were borrowed from common sources, cutting their way into language, most often though through similar channels. And then series of idioms specific to the English language or to the Russian one. The common idioms at the beginning were free constructions of words which an objective communication function expressing sequences from the day life of main professional categories. For example, the human body became an inspiring source for many of the idioms from both languages. For example, the poke uh, to poke one's nose into. It means to kill the goose that lay the golden eggs. If for Russians the hen kurica is the one laying the golden eggs, in the English case the goose is the domestic bird valuable to this extent. To work like a bear, работать как bull. If the Russian make a prolong and affirms that he works like an ox, wool. The Englishman does not emphasize the sustained activity and resigned patience, but rather the strength by comparing himself to the bear. The next examples are the specific idioms. If you focus on specific idioms to the Russian or the English language, they are structures, structured on traditions, social and political aspects, cultural values, and unique for the identity of the two cultures. For example, to carry coal to Newcastle, ехать в Тулу со своим самоваром. A peeping tom, любопытная Варвара. The images of the spiritual and material lives of both communities are mirrored in phraseological units. Because of the existence of a human universal spirit, as well as differently, through their geographical and historical peculiarities. In phraseology, one can find historical facts, social and political aspects, traditions, customs, cultural values, which reflect their linguistic 
future of the world.